All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to get into what we really use, what, what uh, economic leaders really use to try and understand whether our changes in real GDP are a good thing or not a good thing. Remember that we want to understand economic growth. All of this, this stuff with GDP, is trying to understand whether we are experiencing economic growth. And economic growth is one of our three goals in macroeconomics because if we're experiencing economic growth, that means that people are experiencing more utility. More production means more utility. More, uh, a higher real GDP means more production. So if real GDP goes up, that indicates that production has gone up or output has gone up. And if production has gone up, then that probably means that consumption has gone up, meaning people are consuming more stuff because there's more stuff being made, because there's more stuff being recorded as purchased. And if more stuff is being consumed, then that means that people are experiencing more utility in our economy. And so we want this number to be higher, but we can't measure production directly. So we measure the sale of the products in real GDP. But remember, we don't really measure the sale of the products in real GDP. We actually measure the sale of the products in, in nominal GDP. Then we take the price level, which we're already collecting data on, and we deflate the nominal GDP into real GDP. So right here, this is the meat. This is our number. This is what's helping us understand whether good things or not so good things are happening in the economy. But we can go further with this number. This just gives us an absolute number as to whether uh, we ha have produced more or whether we have produced less. But it's hard to compare these numbers just by looking at them. So what we do now is we can convert, just like we convert CPI into a percentage change, we can convert real GDP into a percentage change. And when we do a percentage change over here, we called it the inflation rate. In GDP, real GDP, we will call it the real GDP growth rate. Now we're assuming it's going to be growth. We're assuming it's going to go up. But some years the number has actually go, gone down. And then we would call that negative growth. But for now, let's just assume we're going to have positive growth. So the real GDP growth rate is a percentage, just like the inflation rate is a percentage, just like the unemployment rate is a percentage. All right, the real GDP growth rate. So here's what we're going to say is that economic growth can be understood as a percentage change in real GDP. Now, here's what I want to remind you. And I just said it in one of the, in the last video or the, or the video right before that, is this, is that we have a generic formula for finding a percentage change, right? Percentage change is equal to new number minus old number divided by old number, right? We, we use this for CPI, and now we're going to use it for real GDP. So this is the generic formula. Now let me give you the more specific formula. If you want to find the real GDP growth rate, that's going to be equal to the new real GDP, the most recent real GDP. So we're going to say real GDP sub n. That's going to be whatever year you want the growth rate for, minus the old one. Now, it has to be one year to the next year. You can compare one year to 10 years back if you want to see the overall growth. If you want it as a rate, 
than it needs to be year to year. Okay, so real GDP from one particular year minus real GDP from the previous year. So we're going to put N minus 1 divided by real GDP from the previous year, N minus 1. So new minus old divided by old. Most recent year minus previous year divided by previous year. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, because we need the previous year, we're not going to be able to calculate the real GDP growth rate for 1982. Because in order to calculate the growth rate from 81 to 82, we would need the real GDP from 1981. We don't have that here. Could we get it off of the papers that I gave you? Yes, we could. But here's what we're going to do. We're only going to identify the growth rate for 83, 84, and 85. And so to identify the 19, let's see, real GDP growth rate uh, sub N, okay, so N, so 1983. So to identify the 1983 real GDP growth rate, we need the real GDP from 1983, which is real GDP, not nominal, 3.521. So we're going to go 3.521. We don't need the dollar symbol. It's going to divide away. All right, minus, we need real GDP from the previous year which was 3.344, 3.344, divided by the real, G, uh, real GDP from the year before, which is 3.344. Now, hopefully you have that calculator handy, like I have right here, and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this in parentheses so I can do the whole calculation in one shot. So I'm going to go parenthesis, then 3.521, minus 3.344, then I'm going to close the parenthesis, then I'm going to hit divided by, and then key in 3.344. Now this is going to give me a decimal value, but I'm going to then turn it into a percentage. Here's what I get, 0 0.05293. Now, I'm only going to give my answer to right here, but the reason I went out to this 3 is this 3 tells me if I should round that up. Well, the 3 is smaller than 5, or it's, it's less than 5, so I'm not going to round the 9. So what I'm going to do is, to turn it into a percentage, move my decimal point over, decimal point over two places, and I get 5.29%. And that means, so here's what we're going to say, uh, real GDP growth rate. And here's what we're going to put right here, is we're going to put five, or not here, here, under 1983, 5.29%. And what that means is, is that from 82 to 83, ignoring prices, prices are now left out because we did real GDP, we actually had a 5.29% increase in production, in stuff. We produced 5.29% more stuff in 83 than in 82. That means we produced all the same stuff. I mean, not identical same stuff, but the same amount of stuff. We produced all the same stuff that we produced in 82. We produced it again in 83. And then on top of that, on top of that pile, we put another 5.29% of stuff. And that means that we have increased, we have an, a 5.29% increase in economic growth. And this is something that can help us understand whether we're growing or not and how fast we're growing or whether we're not growing at all. All right, so what I want you to now do is I want you to do the exact same thing for 1984 and 1985. Identify the percentage increase from 83 to 84. Now remember, with, with this one, you're not doing the same thing as you did here. You're not using the 1984 information. We're only going one year at a time. So you're going to use this number and this number to determine the real GDP growth rate for 84. Then to do 1985, you're going to use this number and this number. Okay? So go ahead and pause the video and do that, and then I'll show you the answers. All right, so here's your answers for 1984. You can see that uh, the United States experienced 6.5% increase in real GDP, and that's a bigger increase than we had in 1983, which is only 5.29%, although these are actually pretty big numbers. 
Okay, those were, were pretty good years. Uh, but now, watch what happened in 1985. You should have gotten 3.76%. And you might ask yourself, oh man, this is interesting. Here, we went 5.29% higher. Then we went another 6.5% higher. Now remember, this number is being compared to 1982 dollars, even though the percentage increase is, is above 1983. Okay? Uh, so so I'm, I'm just pointing out that we are comparing like dollars like items, okay? So this is a legitimate production only increase having nothing to do with an increase in prices. So that's that's really good increase. So not only did we did we increase a lot in 1983, we increased even more in 1984, but now watch what happened in 1985. It looks like production slowed down a little bit. We slowed down a little from 6.5%, went down to 3.76%. All right, let's talk about per capita real GDP. Well, the phrase per capita means per person. So basically what we're going to do with per capita real GDP is we're going to take real GDP and we're going to try and figure out, well, how much real GDP was each person on average responsible for within the economy? And when we say each person, we mean all of the people within the economy. So here's what we need to do to try and understand per capita real GDP. We need to identify the population of the United States in 1982, 1983, 84, and 85 so that we can calculate per capita real GDP. Because the formula... Let me give you a quick formula here. Per capita real GDP, very simple formula here, is equal to real GDP, and we'll say per capita real GDP sub n, meaning for a particular year, GDP sub n divided by the population of the country in that particular year. So why don't you do this? Why don't you look up on the internet, look up the population for the United States in 1982, 1983, 1984, and 1985, and then we'll continue. All right, here's the numbers I came up with. Uh, 1982, population 231.7 million. 1983, 233.8 million. 235.8 million in 1984, and 1985, 237.9 million. So if we want to calculate, in fact, I'll change this column right here. Let's get rid of this. We're going to calculate the per capita real GDP for all four of these years. Per capita real GDP, okay? And all we have to do to do that is we have to simply divide the real GDP right here by the population. Now I want to caution you here. You have to be very careful because I want to note that real GDP here is in trillions where the population is in millions. So we have to do one of two things, well one of three things. We either need to convert real GDP into millions, so we can get that way because we need the same units in the numerator and the denominator, or we can convert the population into trillions. That'll work too. The third option is to convert both of them into a separate units. Okay, a sep separate kind of units. I think the best thing to do would be to convert our trillions into millions. Now. Uh, trillions coming down becomes billions, then millions. Okay, So we can turn trillions into millions simply by moving the decimal point over six places. All right. So for 1982, per capita real GDP uh, is going to be, so we're going to take our 3.344 trillion. And we're going to move the decimal point over two places or three places. That's going to become billions. Now, if we put another comma and move it over three more places, it becomes millions. So we have 
this many millions of dollars is our real GDP in 1982. Then we're going to divide that by our population, which is already in millions, 231.7 million. Now the millions are basically going to cancel because we have millions over millions. So they're going to cancel and all we now have to do is this number divided by this number and the answer is going to be in dollars. So let's grab a calculator. We'll put in 3, 3, 4, 4, then 0, 0, 0. Then we'll divide by 231.7. Press enter and here's what we get. It's a dollar amount because it's a per capita real GDP. So it's a, it's a money value. 14, 432.40, and I'm going to go to pennies, 0.46. Okay? And so per capita real GDP in 1982 is 14,432.46. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you now to pause the video and I want you to calculate per capita real GDP for 83, 84, and 85 using these numbers and these numbers. But don't forget to move the decimal point over because we're going to turn the real GDP into millions so that we get a correct number. All right, so you want to check your numbers now? I got 1505988 for 1983. 1590331 for 84 and 163561 for 1985. Now let me try to explain. Well, what does this mean? Okay, thank you, Mr. Ryan. Uh, you were able to explain to me how to calculate per capita real GDP. But what does this number mean? Well, first I want you to notice that the number is going up. That's good for our economy. When per capita GDP goes up, uh, per, now note, it's per capita real GDP. So this number is not going up because of price increases. This number is going up because of productivity. And here's what the basic idea is. Per capita real GDP represents how much of the output produced. Is given to each person on average. So here's what we're saying is on average each person is getting this many dollars worth of stuff. Now that includes everybody, that includes babies, that includes kindergartners. Now in reality babies and kindergartners may not get that much stuff but their parents may be buying them that much stuff. Maybe not that specifically, but it includes their house and it includes their transportation all rolled up. Okay, so if you have seven people in one household, you would multiply this number by seven and that's how much that household on average. Now understand, there are wealthy people in this country that get way more than this and there are very poor people that get far less than this. But here's the thing that matters. It doesn't matter whether everybody's getting the same amount of production. What matters is this, is that the number is going up. See, you might be thinking, sure, Professor Ryan, real GDP is going up, but the population is going up also. So that means the extra people might be using up all of the extra stuff we're producing. Well, I have good news for you. Now that we do per capita real GDP, you can see that the amount of output that is being consumed or used on average by each person, that amount is going up. And that means year by year in the United States, you personally are getting a little more and more production. Your life, you are getting more utility. Your life is becoming better year by year by year. Even if it's not as good as you want it to be, Overall, your life is getting better year by year if per capita real GDP is increasing. And so here's the bottom line. This per capita real GDP in economics, it is a measure of the standard of living. 
in an economy. Now, what does standard of living mean? Very simply, standard of living, it's a measure of material well-being. It's a measure, or a, let's say a measure. It's a level of material well-being. It means how much on average, the, how much stuff do people in that country have? And the more stuff on average that people have in a country, the better life is in that country for all of the people. So if you look, at, if you look throughout the world, look at all the countries, if you were able to identify, for example, you could probably look this up on the internet, look up the per capita real GDP for all of the countries in the world, or most of the countries in the world. And what you're going to see is that most of the countries have much lower per capita real GDP than the wealthier countries, significantly lower. And what you'll see is that United, the United States is usually near the top. And that's because we have developed an economy that is very comfortable, that's very pleasing, where we're able to do a lot of leisure things and still be able to have plenty of food, where we throw out food. Not that, you know, I'm not promoting that, but, you know, we throw out food. We, we discard useful objects when we just, they're just not useful to us anymore. We're able to throw things out because our standard of living in the United States is so high, okay? Well, that is per capita real GDP. It is another measure of economic growth, uh, in particular a measure of the standard of living, uh, and you should be able to calculate that. But uh, we are now uh, pretty much done talking about the general subject of economic growth, and what we can now do is we can start moving on to how can we use this information to understand how decisions are made within the economy.